He won't let you go. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You just need to praise him sometime. And even it's not about feelings. Oftentimes our faith is based on our feelings, but sometimes you need to tell your feelings to follow your faith. And when your faith is leading your feelings, then your feelings can catch up with your faith. And then you can really sing that he'll never let you go. Uh, as we continue in our series, uh, Breaking Barriers, I think it's always appropriate uh, to have either a pop quiz or a review. And so since y'all are not ready for a pop quiz this morning, I'll, how about if I just give you a review of, of what we have traveled through thus far. Uh, we started the series off uh, breaking the barrier of fear. How many of us really admitted that we do have fears? We do have fears, don't we? Yes, and, and so we admitted that. So the fear barrier is a spiritual battle. And we said that fear will cancel out faith or your faith will cancel out your fear. And so one of the two are gonna operate. They both cannot coexist. You either have faith or you have fear. And when fear comes in, you have to rely on your faith to push it out. And then the second thing that we learn, which is also a spiritual battle, is worry. And we say worry is like a good rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't take you anywhere. And so we say you're gonna worry about nothing and pray about everything. And then we started learning that we need to have good communication skills. And the first communication skill we had to learn is how to communicate with God. And so we learned that you need to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and what? Pump your brakes. And so when we do that, we can hear what God has to say uh, before we start trying to tell God what he needs to know. And then the, third, four, the fourth lesson was on communication part two in our communicating with one another and we say that your speech exposes your character or, or, or who you are your your speech exposes that and so we say that we need to practice godly speech we need to practice that uh, so that what comes out of you is what's really in you and then on last week, I want to thank Reverend Arline and Minister Roundtree for such an awesome job as they're teaching us how to break the barrier of conflict. And those are two great people to do so because they're both part of our counseling ministry. But the uh, conflict resolution starts with you. You, you're, you're the one. You, if you want resolution in any type of conflict, it starts uh, with you. You must make the first move. All right. So that's that's what we've done thus far. And if you've missed any of those messages, you can go out to our YouTube channel and uh, review them so that you can get caught up on all the other points that we made there. Now, uh, if you would stand on your feet and for those of you who have your Bibles, turn to Deuteronomy 31 8 or look in your bulletin. It is in your bulletin because we'll be coming from the uh, the NIV uh, and this is our our um, memory verse now you should have this memorized by now because we've been in this five weeks it's, it's only one verse it's Deuteronomy 31 8 it should be at the very bottom of your bulletins and um, it's uh, uh, should be in your Bibles. I pray that it's still in your Bibles. All right, and I'm going. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you the count of three, and we're we're going to say it in unisons, and and I'll start us off on three. One, two, three. The Lord Himself. You may be seated. Thank you. So now, those are the five barriers that we have broken through, and I hope that it has been some help to at least someone. If it's just a help for one person, then, and then we'll give God all the praise and all the glory because that message is for you. Today I want to deal with something that not a single person in this room is exempt from. And I know this, so this message is for everyone. You may not believe it, but everyone, uh, well, let me just ask this. Uh, how many of us have ever had any kind of doubt? That's what I thought. Yeah, and see, if you didn't raise your hand, you were doubting. Should I raise my hand? I 
I have any doubt. I doubt, I, I doubt if I have any. So all of us have some form of doubt. It, it doesn't matter about your religious affiliation. It doesn't matter how great your faith is. It doesn't matter how wealthy or how poor you are. It doesn't matter about your economic class. It doesn't matter about your educational background. None of those things matter because in all areas of our lives or some area of our lives, we deal with doubt. And so we start now for us as believers, we have even uh, a more difficult time dealing with doubt because then we have to deal with if our doubt is a problem. We have to deal, we have to, we start asking ourselves, is it spiritually or biblically wrong to doubt? Is it a sin like we've learned that worry and fear are a sin, right? They are. Worry and sin are a fear. So now the question becomes, is doubt a sin? And then another question we ask ourselves uh, is doubt and unbelief the same thing? Hmm. What do you think? I don't know either, so we'll just keep moving. No, no, no. We, 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 let's, let, let's park there. And this is what we're going to deal with today is how to deal with doubt, how to break the doubt barrier, uh, because it, it, it causes us uh, turmoil and it can hinder us in moving forward. It, it can stifle you, can it not? It can paralyze you. When you have doubt, you sometimes you don't know if you, uh, if you ought to make a move or not because you're wondering what might happen if you do and if you don't. Is that real? All right. So if you would open your Bibles uh, to the book of John. And for those of you who have your electronic devices, I encourage you to pull down the app uh, uh, version. It's a great Bible app. It has all different kinds of Bible translations and devotions and studies on it. And so I encourage you to do that. And for those of you who are socially savvy, uh, I encourage you to follow me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is at Herb Redrick, and we can continue this conversation throughout the week. And for those of you who are visiting with us, uh, we thank you for being here. I pray that I'll see you at the newcomer's reception. Uh, but I also would encourage you to go out to our website at fmbc-concord.org and click the Facebook button at the top uh, and like us because we already like you. All right. All right, so what did I say, John? <clears throat> so turn to chapter 20. And I encourage you to read the entire chapter. Uh, uh, it gives you some fuller background. This has taken place uh, after Jesus had been crucified. And I want you to drop down to, uh, let's start at verse 24. Let's start there. And there we find these words. Now Thomas, also known as Denimus, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So they, so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together at the house again. Thomas was with them. Watch this. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, See my hand, no, say, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out and put your hand in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet they have believed. I want to talk about breaking the barrier of doubt, uh, breaking the barrier of doubt. Now, uh, to understand this text, uh, Jesus had already been crucified and he had already been raised from the dead. Uh, it was a gruesome week for Jesus. He started out on at the first of the week. He was a hero. And by the end of the week, he was a zero. He started by them praising him and saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, Hosanna, uh, Hosanna. And then by the end of the week, they were hollering, crucify him, crucify him.
crucify him. And as we get into these next six weeks, as we're approaching Christmas, we can do um, Christmas Easter. We can start thinking more and more oh, Boy, Christmas already. But it's, can y'all believe it's March? Yeah, as we get closer and closer to Easter, uh, I, we need to really look back at the story and understand what happens because oftentimes we race right past a lot of the nuances and get right to the cross and the resurrection. But here now, after the resurrection, uh, Jesus had been seen by Mary Magdalene and he had been seen uh, by the, uh, the 10 other disciples and Thomas was not there. Now, just, you know, I, I, when I read the text, I, I I just sometimes, I don't know how y'all read it, but when I read that 24th verse there, they said, now Thomas, who uh, also known as D Denimus, and that name Thomas and Denimus uh, means twin. Uh, he had a twin somewhere, and he's really, his real, his, his surname or his given name was Judas, uh, but he's the other Judas, and sometimes if you read your Bible and you hear the word the other Judas, uh, this is this Judas, and that's why the other Judas, they say Judas Iscariot. So you'll know, because don't you know some folks with the same name? And if you say, well, you're talking about Thomas, you say, no, not that Thomas, the other Thomas. Well, this is what we're talking about here. Didymus, uh, Thomas, his, he, who was one of the 12, which means he hung out with Jesus. He'd been hanging out with Jesus for three years. and He'd seen all the miracles that Jesus had done, and he'd, he'd walked with Jesus and, and known all the great teachings that Jesus had done. But after the resurrection, it says now that, that Thomas was not with them uh, when Jesus came. Now, uh, Jesus rose on a Sunday morning, and when Jesus came to them, it was on a Sunday. And so I just imagine they said they were at a house, and during those times, people came to the houses to have church. The only reason we have them in buildings now is because so many of us come, and so we can't all get into your house. Can we? If we do, we'll just close this down and come to your house. And let you pay the mortgage on and we'd be fine with that, right? But, but because of that, uh, they, they were all hanging out uh, at, at, at this house. We don't know whose house, uh, but they were at a house. And it says now that Thomas was not there. Uh, you know, if I remember, now only if I remember, when I get to heaven, I want to see Thomas and ask him, Thomas, where were you on that day? Why weren't you in church on the first Sunday that Jesus got up? Y'all don't want to know that? I want to know where the brother was. I mean, did, did he not get the text message or, 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 or did, he, did he not get the memo that we going over to Peter's house or James' house? It says because they all were together. So obviously he knew where they were hanging out, right? Because when he got there, you know, they started telling him. In fact, I know what it was. He got there that day, but he was late. Church was over when he got there. Message had already been preached. Preacher had already gone home. But, but that, I'm not talking about y'all because y'all here. Don't look at me like I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about you because you here. So, 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 so he got there late and Jesus had been and Jesus had gone. So here's, a, here, here's the first thing I want you to understand. And, and, and we'll, we'll know, notice what they said next. It said, uh, they started saying to Thomas, we have seen the Lord. Now, we just have that phrase in our Bible one time. We have seen the Lord. But in the Greek, that phrase means they kept repeating, Thomas, we have seen him. We have seen him, Thomas. So what is happening? We know that Thomas must be questioning th his, their seeing him, right? Because that phrase means they had to keep repeating it over and over. And have you ever had to tell somebody something over and, and you know it's true and they keep doubting you and you just keep telling them over and over. I told you, I saw, now it'd be, it'd have been all right if only one had seen him, right? Then you can sort of think it might be their imagination. Maybe you just fell asleep and you had a dream and you thought you saw him, but at least 10 people had seen him, right? And in, and in, the, he, in, in, the, in the Greek world, no, in the Hebrew world, they need at least two to three witnesses to verify a statement. Here he's got how many? 10. 10 people tell you they saw something and you doubt it. Hmm. Here's your first, here's your, here's your first uh, uh, breakthrough that I want you to have. The first one I want you to have is doubt creeps in when you're alone. Doubt creeps in when you're alone. 
Thomas was somewhere by himself. Now, it wasn't that he was oblivious to what had all taken place. He knew that Jesus had been crucified, and they probably kept telling him that, you, yes, he was crucified. And Thomas is having a difficult time dealing with someone who has been dead coming back to life, even though now he was there. In fact, he was there when uh, Jesus said he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. If you go back, I think that's chapter uh, 11. Yeah, I think that's John chapter 11. If you go back and read that, uh, Thomas was the one said, come on, let's go back. He was going to go back while Jesus uh, was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. So he'd seen that kind of miracle, but now Lazarus just died, died. You know, we don't know what his sickness was. Jesus had been crucified. You know, there's different ways of dying, right? Do you think some forms of dead is deader than other forms of dead? Or is dead just dead? I mean, just think about it. I mean, because see, it seems like Thomas had a problem with it was OK that, you know, Lazarus died from a sickness. So that Jesus had enough power to get him up from a sickness. But he didn't think Jesus had enough power to get him up from a crucifixion. See, I. That's how I look at this stuff. I mean, he had to be deader than dead, so there must be different forms of deadness. Well, when we die, we'll know which dead we got. Are you really, really dead, dead, or you just dead? You, you, you know, don't y'all ever have those kind of questions? Okay, all right, I, I, I'm going to let you get out of my mind so you won't have to worry about how I think some things. But, 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 but notice now, notice, 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 notice. All right, so after, after they kept telling him that Jesus had died, that he'd risen from the dead, and, and that they had seen him with their own eyes. Look what the brother says. Unless I put my hand where the nail marks were, where the nails were, all right, the marks. If I put my hand there, put my finger, he said, I got to see it. Then I got, he must have been from Missouri, <laughs> Right? Yeah, he said, I got to see it with my own eyes, right? He said, unless I see where the nail marks were and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand in his side, look what it says, I will not believe. Now, he's got this graphic picture of how Jesus died. He believed all the other things that had happened to him, right? He believed that he had nails in his hand, right? He didn't, right? He was, he's not doubting that. He believed that he'd been uh, 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 speared in the side. He's not doubting that. So, so what's the problem, Thomas? Thomas says, I got to see this for myself. I'd heard what all of y'all said. I heard you. But unless I believe now, uh, some Bibles uh, have that as as uh, his doubting and some have it as unbelief. But in the text here, when we understand how that Greek sentence is constructed, he's saying, I'm doubting everything that you all are telling me. So let's just spend a little bit of time here right now. And let me see if I can help you, because I asked you earlier. And so let's just take a show of hands and. and and see how many of you say that doubt and unbelief are the same. Raise your hand. You doubt. You don't. You know, look. You got. You doubting. It's okay. Raise your hand if you think doubt and unbelief are the same. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Don't be looking at other folks. I should say. All right. Close your eyes. Everybody close. Cause see, I saw you looking around like. See. See who else hand going up. See, you, you don't even, you got doubt in yourself whether you doubt if belief and unbelief the same. You had to see whether somebody else was doing before you raise your hand. I saw you going like. All right. So now how many of you think doubt and unbelief are different? See, so I saw somebody do like this. They, they put the hand halfway up and brought it back down. They, they, they don't know. All right. So now in this Greek world, Doubt means to, and the way this word is used here, means to have two minds on the same matter. All right? It's, it's like your judgment. You, well, I believe that's right, but I believe that's right. I believe this is right, but I believe that is right. And, and so doubt, you, you're, you're in two places on it. You, you, you're uncertain. You don't have enough evidence. You don't have enough information. You got enough to just put you here, but then there's something lacking, so you're still over here. 
All right, that's what doubt has. Okay, so uh, so th they're 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 not equivalent. They're not paramount. They're, they're not the same. Uh, uh, unbelief is that you got enough information. You just decide you don't want to believe it. You just choose to believe that you don't want to believe. I don't want to believe it. I don't care where you say you've been. I don't want to believe it. Well, I got the receipt here that says, no, 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 I, I just don't believe it. You ever had anybody like that? Uh, how much truth are you telling them? You see folks looking around, you don't even want to raise your hand. Just, just, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, but there are folks, I don't care how much facts you give them, they're not going to believe it. So here, here's what doubt is. Doubt is not having, is not believing because you don't have enough evidence unbelief is not believing regardless of how much evidence you have. That's the difference, all right? So here, here's your second uh, breakthrough here. Boom. The one you have is that your, that doubt, most of your doubt is because of what you don't know. Most of your doubt comes from what you don't know, okay? Isn't that what we just said? And so this is where Thomas is. Th Thomas is saying, I hear everything you have said. I, I, I hear it all, but I need some more proof. So doubt can be good and it can be bad. So there's negative doubt and there's positive doubt. All right. Are y'all walking with me that far? All right. So now let's go just a little bit further. Let's look at the rest of the text here. So now it says that a week later, uh, the disciples, his disciples were together again at the house. Uh, they were there again. They were there again. And they said, and Thomas was with them. Now, this is sort of saying like maybe they not consider him one of the disciples right now because they're believing and he's doubting. Now, this has got to just blow your mind. I don't know how many of you read it. It says, though the doors were locked. You see that right there? Jesus came and stood among them. How did he do that? Is he a ghost? Is, is this, is he just a spirit now? How many of you think he's just a spirit now? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. See, some of you are really slow to raise your hand on that. Yeah, all right. We need to spend a little time. In fact, when you read that whole chapter, you'll see you back up a few verses. This is the second time he says that they say that the doors were locked and Jesus came and stood among them. Now, if that happened in here. Come on, y'all. Just let, let's just be real. <laughs> let's just be real about how you would be acting right about now. If you went to somebody's funeral on Friday. Right. We in the house with the doors locked. Right. We talking about what how how much we miss them. Right. Come on. Walk with me now. This is real. Right. We're talking about it. Right. We're sitting up there. We're in the house. Oh, man, we sure gonna miss Jesus. It's bad, man. It was terrible, man. And then. Right. Come on. Come on. Would I be the only one that passed out? Listen to me careful. That would be a brown pants day. OK, you catch that one later. You just catch that. One. You just catch that one later. Y'all understand now. Some of you caught that right there. Some of you like, what's the word that mean? Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right. Come on now. Let's be real. Let's see, do y'all not read the scriptures like that? I mean, the man got up from the dead. Now, not only did he get up from the dead. Look what the text said. The doors were locked. Security system on. Right. And you hear something go beep, 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 beep. And you're all right there. Who moved? Now, 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 here's the thing. Can, can, I, just have a, can I just have a little bit more time on this? You, you know what part of the problem, why the doors were locked. They were afraid that they could be next. They'd already crucified Jesus, and they were probably looking for their disciples, and they were just wondering, oh, boy, they don't, they don't kill our leader, and, and so we, 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 we next. That's why Thomas wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, where y'all going to be? All right, I'll check y'all later. Yeah, because they, they know y'all over there. Yeah, see, see, I know that. Yeah, y'all been right there over to Thomas's house. Y'all would. Yeah, we going to Thomas. I don't y'all tell nobody where we are. That's right. Yes, Tommy got the snacks. OK, all right. So y'all don't see that like that. But look what the text says. He came and stood among them. 
Now, how do I know they were so scared and terrified? Because look what Jesus had to say next. Peace be with you. Ooh, I needed that. When you need that, when, yeah, when you need to know that, yeah. Whew, I'm feeling better right now, and I wasn't even there. Oh, let me catch my breath. Okay, Jesus. You sure that's you? This is me. So now, after he does that, he turns and has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you and me. Because a lot of us are doubting Thomases right here. Now, I ask you, was he a spirit or was he a person? And you know you have a lot of faith, even those who claim uh, that they're Christians, that they only believe Jesus rose in the spirit form. All right? But Jesus came back to life as we're going to come back to life. How many of you believe that? Don't raise your hand on that. Some of us are still wrestling with that. Some of us still have that doubt. That's why we can't go all in. And, and so I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit more on that at the end right here. But, but notice now, Jesus says, first, put your finger here. Right? See my hands. Reach out and put your hand into my side. And stop doubting. And believe. Notice now what Thomas does. Does Thomas make a move to touch him? Text doesn't say. But from his reaction, he went on what he saw. He dropped down and he called him my what? Lord and my God. Now, you don't know how significant this is. This is the first declaration after the resurrection of his being called my Lord and my God. And it's the last one that, Tom, that John wrote in his gospel. Why? Because he is a Jew. And to call anyone God would then have been considered blasphemy. But he's calling Jesus the man. He's calling the man God. And the God is man. It makes him the God man. And if he's God, guess what? He can do anything that he wants to do. See, that's the problem that, that, that we somewhat to have. Uh, can, 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 can I talk plain? Notice here, here here's, your, here's your third uh, 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 breakthrough here. Now, just watch this one. Because uh, doubt attempts to take our current faith. Watch this now. And prevent it from becoming our future faith. Meaning that they understood that Jesus uh, uh, had done many miracles, that he had turned water into wine. We, we can believe that. We can go that far. And we believe that uh, he caused the blind to see and the lame to walk. We, we can believe that. And we can believe that Jesus was, uh, can tell the wind and the waves to say, peace, be still, and they can stop. And we can believe that. And we can believe that Jesus can come out and, and walk on the water. And, and we can believe that. But to get up from the dead, some of us have a problem understanding how can a man who has been crucified been raised from the dead? Well, it was more than just an identification. It was more than information. It was about our salvation. His getting up tells us that we can get up. His dying saying that when we die that we can also live again. And so what you, we have to do is once you get enough faith to cross that barrier, then you can believe that Jesus is God in the flesh. This is what he's teaching us. This is for us because many of us are still doubting Thomases. You say, well, how, how so? Because many of us still have areas we don't trust God in. We get real close, but our current faith, doubt is preventing our current faith from becoming our perfect faith, meaning that we won't move up just a little bit further to trust God all the way here. Can I talk plain? Many of us accept Jesus as a great teacher. We'll accept him as a miracle worker. We'll accept him with all the great accolades of a great human being. But when it comes to accepting him as God and trusting every word that he says, we have doubt. And that's why it's very difficult for us as believers, because we doubt sometimes the word of God. So I figure that you might have some of those. And I figure I need to give you some steps to help you deal with your doubts. So let me give you four steps, four breakthroughs to conquer doubt. You don't remember anything else. 
Uh, I'm going to give you these four breakthroughs. The first one is you must admit that you have doubts. Why? Because it's not spiritual. It's not like fear and it's not like worry. It's not a sin to have doubts. Okay? In fact, you need to admit your doubts, all right, so that you can face your doubts and so you can fight your doubts. So admit it. Just admit it. Say, let's say, I got doubts. Oh, you didn't say it like you got it. You, you doubt not your doubts. <laughs> say, I have doubts. Yeah, so that's the first thing. That ought to give you some peace that you can be comfortable with that. See, oftentimes in our faith, we, we're uncomfortable. We don't want to tell folks what we doubt about what we believe in our faith. Is that not right? We, we want everybody to think we believe it all. We understand it all. I got it all together. I know it all. I, I, I really, I embrace it all. But we don't. There's some things it's okay to say, I'm wrestling with this. That's okay. That's okay. All right. What's the first one? Admit your doubt. Okay, so the second one is, uh, what's the second one? Articulate your doubts. Now, what do I mean by that? I said you got to admit you have doubts. That's just, that's just the first thing, admitting. But now you need to say what your doubts are. You need, you need to articulate them. You can say, I doubt, that it, watch this, some of you doubt that everything in the Bible is true. Raise your hand. See, you, you only want to do that. Scared, 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 right? Yeah. But how do I know you doubt is all is true? Because you don't live by all of it. You discount it. You put it aside. You say, that doesn't apply to me. Or that's old and that doesn't matter anymore. You, you make up excuses on why you don't. Right? Or you know folks that do. Let me put it that way. You know folks that act like that. That's not you. That's other folks. Right? So articulate them, write them down, write down the things you doubt. Okay, put them down, put them down, put them down. Let's see. And the third one is analyze your doubt. In fact, here's, here's, here's another way to say it. Doubt your doubts. Right? Here's when, when I say analyze your doubt, where do they come from? Uh, what is causing you to doubt? What's the source of your doubt? Is it because of something someone else has said? Is it a book you read? You know, how oftentimes say, well, I saw on the internet, and you know if it's on the internet, it's true. <laughs> right? You know that, right? Because first thing you say, Google it. Isn't that what we do? We just figure, we just Google something, and whatever comes up, you know that whatever comes up is not right just because it's first. You do know that, don't you? But that's the first one you click, right? Bam! And you read that, you discount all the rest of them. The right one may not be to about four or five pages later. Because it didn't have enough clicks. You know, you see, I'm teaching a little bit of marketing here, but y'all didn't come here for that. But, yeah, so it's not the first. But, but, right, but analyze your doubt. Doubt your doubts. Question your doubts. Here's a good thing about, about, about uh, admitting your doubts and, and analyzing your doubts and, and articulating your doubts and all of that. The good thing about this is God isn't afraid of that. See, he's God. He, he's not worried about you questioning him. If he's God, he can stand up to the scrutiny. Don't, don't be afraid to scrutinize what you doubt. But here's what you don't need to do. Don't just remain in your doubt. Okay, some of us just take safety in remaining in our doubt. You know why? Because if you really get an answer, then you got to do something about it. Right? Yeah, so we'd rather take the position, I don't want to know. I'm good right here. I'm just going to stay, right? Okay, uh -huh. all right. All right, and so the last one, now this is the one where it gets tough here, accept the word of God over your doubts. Say, ouch. Yeah, because oftentimes even when we read it, we say, I don't, still own, I don't get it, I don't still don't believe it. Because you're looking right at it. Right? Now, we all get this one, thou shall not lie. We, we, we do have no problem with that one. You get it? But start talking about some of that other stuff in there. Oh. Mm. So you got to accept God's word over your doubts. Even that which you don't understand, those things that are a mystery. Just keep the main things the main things. What you don't understand, 
then that's when you put your faith in God's word. There's a passage in there, and you hear us say it often from the state, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So what is he saying? When you don't understand, you just accept God's word and lean toward that instead of towards your own understanding. That word lean means what supports you, what, what you build your basis for standing on. He's saying stand on the word of God. Stand on the word of God. So what, what's the bottom line? What's the bottom line? Here, here's, here's what I want you to understand. That the presence of doubt does not mean the absence of faith. The presence of doubt does not mean the absence of faith. It's okay to doubt, but it's not okay to remain in your doubt. God went on, to, Jesus went on to tell Thomas, he says, you believe because you have seen me. If you want a blessing, here's the blessing for you. He says, blessed are those who believe who have not seen me. In other words, we're accepting God's word. Thomas didn't accept God's word. He didn't, they, he didn't accept the word of the other disciples. But we have the written word of God. And it says now, you'll be blessed. How many want a blessing? Every hand ought to be up. Anybody here that doesn't want a blessing? Anybody? Okay. Want a blessing? Raise it high. Wave it like you don't. Just wave your hand in the air like you just don't care. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you want a blessing, there it is right there. He says, bless are those who believe. He's just not talking about in his resurrection. He's talking about believing in who he is, that he is the Christ, that he lived, that he died, that he's coming back again, looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. He says, believe that and you will be blessed. Amen? amen? Amen and amen. I pray that the word has been seed in good soil. Uh, I want to take a moment and forgot to acknowledge my new friend here, Kevin Vincent, if you'll stand. Kevin, he'll be out in the lobby. If you'll stand so folks can see you. He'll be out in the lobby. He's running for county commissioner, so he'll be out there in the lobby uh, here to meet and greet you at that time. I pray that this word has been seed in good soil. Uh, I pray that you'll come back at one o'clock today to have Holy Communion with us. It's a believer service, so you're invited. It's not a member service. Doesn't mean you don't have to be a member of this church. All you have to do is be a member of God's family. And when it says when two or more are gathered in his name, there he'll be in the midst. And that we're going to gather at uh, immediately or shortly after the 1130 service right here. Uh, we'll sing a few songs and we'll have a prayer and then we'll have Holy Communion. So please come back out and join us. Go get some breakfast or take your nap. Do whatever you need to do. But come back at one o'clock and join us. Amen. If you would, please stand on your feet. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us today. I pray that the message you heard was encouraging to you, that you heard something that you have been looking for. I pray that it draws you closer to God so that you can be closer to him. Now, if you need more information on how to have a closer walk with the Lord, I encourage you to go out to our website at fmbc-concord.org or you can email us at info at fmbc-concord.org and we'll be glad to tell you about the next steps. I've got some information I would like to send you. So if you send me your email address, I'll send you the information on how you can have a closer walk with the Lord. It's absolutely free, no obligation, and we'll email it to you within 24 to 72 hours. Thank you for listening and have a friend join you next time. And I look forward to seeing you on next week. God bless you and have a good day.